Hi friends, I hope you had a great Mother's Day. So I have a friend who has been so inspiring to me this last couple of years that she's inspired me to start something that I'm wanting to make into an annual event. So we've got, we've got uh, fighter planes going over, we've got trucks driving by. Um, so um, I wanted to just introduce you to a friend of mine, Stacy Bradley who I am giving the, the Coach Mom Most Inspiring Mom Award for 2017-2018 goes to Stacy Bradley um, for Mother's Day 2018. And we didn't, we were gonna do the live last night, but she needed to get in some quality time with her kids. And then um, this morning we were going to do it, and then she had something with one of her foster kids that she needed to attend to. So once again, she was hard to reach because she was um, she was serving her children. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about Stacy. Um, I'm going to try to bring her. Yes, bring them. I'm going to try to bring her on camera right now. We've never done this, so. You'll be there and I can hear you. So it says she, they're adding you in right now, Stacy. So I'll get about Stacy. Oh, it works. <laughs> there you are, Stacy. Hi. Okay, guys, you've got to meet Stacy Bradley. Um, she is so inspiring to me. She, first of all, was already a mother of two, and then she started um, taking in foster children. Uh, was it about two years ago, Stacey? Uh, yeah, we just hit our two-year anniversary. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, she has just been an inspiration to me. It's not been the easiest journey so far. She's, um, she and her husband, Rob, have ministered to three different families. And um, they really, really minister to the whole family. So I want you to hear about that. Um, but first of all, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Stacy. And I know this is like shocking because Stacy didn't know why I was asking her. I had no she... idea. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Stacy, most inspiring mom. There you are. So that is so sweet, um, Brenna. Oh my goodness. Uh, you really are. You're you're an inspiration. So, just um, tell us a little bit about yourself, like you and your husband. How long you've been married? How old your kids are and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, had no idea that this that that's why you asked me to come on this, and um, it's so sweet. I'm kind of humbled because I'm just like a nobody, you know, <laughs> just just doing what God asked us to do. So I don't really know what to say to that. It's very sweet though. Um, but my husband and I, Rob, have been married for, we just had our 15th wedding anniversary, um, and we have two biological children and currently have three, um, I call them placements because I don't like the title foster children, so three placements in our home, um, a 10-year-old boy, a 5-year-old girl, and a two-month-old baby who's rocking our world, um, and um, we homeschool our biological children and um, just really love the whole picture of foster care and um, how it really embodies um, the way that Christ loves us. You know, like we're supposed to love and love well and Christ loves us and loves us well. And so we just try really hard to do that on a daily basis. Um, and we fail a lot, but thankfully God's grace, you know, but God, but God's grace is there. Um, and I don't know, I don't really know what else to say. So, so what are some of the, the hard things that have come with, with, with placements in your home? Um, what are some of just the, we don't need all the details, but just some of the things that you as a family, um, you as you and Rob as parents and, and your kids, what have you what are the areas? for growth. Yeah. <laughs> the is and things like that. 
Um, I think the largest area for growth for our family has been forgiveness. Um, hurt people hurt, right? They hurt people hurt. And that comes out even in children. And so when we are dealing with children from hard places um, and hard backgrounds, um, and oftentimes are still put in their hard backgrounds with visits and stuff, um, it hurt people hurt. And so we get behavior that's very unlovable from our children. And we have to forgive and love and forgive again and over and over and over again. Um, and that's not easy, um, you know, to forgive is, but you, is, is very difficult. And there are days where, or even times where it takes me a couple days to get to the point of forgiveness, um, which is normal, you know, it's ugly, but it's, it's normal for us. Um, so I think just overall, that's been the biggest challenge. Um, and especially for our kids, you know, just when you just want to play with someone, but they're so ugly to you. Um, and we now as parents have to teach them and model forgiveness so that they learn forgiveness and, um, you know, I, I think that is just hands down the hardest part of foster care is being able to, to forgive and look beyond the behavior to the brokenness. Um, because the behavior doesn't come from a place of just, I want to be a naughty child. There is a story behind this extreme behavior. Um, and so we have to look beyond the behavior to the brokenness. It's a superpower God gives us because I did not have that in me until, you know, until we started fostering and, and God just came in and said, okay, I'm going to give you eyes. And I, we just prayed, God, give us eyes to see, give us eyes to see all the time. Like my heart cried, give me eyes to see what's going on here. And he has been so faithful over and over and over again. And I have been able to step back and see um, what other people looking on would just see a bratty kid. And I've been able to see what else is going on here. And, and that's been such a gift. And again, just a testament to God's faithfulness in this journey. He's been so faithful. Do you think people have to have like perfect backgrounds, perfect healthy childhoods in order to be parents that extend this kind of grace? No, I think that the more broken your background, the better it is because you can relate. You know, I didn't come from a perfect home. I came from brokenness and, um, you know, I don't know that we should have been removed from our homes, but it wasn't um, a healthy home and it wasn't a home full of love and it at times wasn't a safe home. Um, and, you know, I, I, I am a child of a meth addict as a mother, my biological mom um, and my parents that raised me have um, struggles themselves also. Um, they love me, but they have struggles. And I think that that has allowed me and shaped me into the type of mom that I wanted to be. Um, and I did not live for the Lord for a long time in my life, you know, and um, my husband and I came to know the Lord together um, in about, I think it was about 10 years ago, I wanna say. Um, and God used, so I already knew what I didn't wanna look like as a mom. And then God came in and said, I'm gonna sharpen that. I'm going to make it better, you know? And so he just kept molding and molding and keeps molding every day, you know, like he's just constantly molding us from that broken place into, you know, something that resembles or tries to resemble his love for us, you know, and it's challenging, but he's faithful. Yes. Well, I want to say what an inspiration you've been to me on, on having those glasses that really the ability to look past behavior and not just be offended by it or whatever. I mean, when we're talking about foster and adoptive kids that come from hard places, from bro broken places, and sometimes it's been challenging for me to, it's, it's just, there are challenges and there are challenges yeah. beyond to the to the root issues and things like that you really helped me with that and I'm really thankful thankful for that oh, Brenna. so how you um I love your take on how you minister to the whole family yeah as foster when you're in foster care so tell me tell us a little bit about that you know, Rob and I just have um, a real conviction about ministering to the whole family um, because big picture, foster care is not just about the children. 
um, we aren't doing our jobs as Christ followers if we're not trying to reach the un, um, you know, the unbelievers, right? So we have these parents who, for so many different reasons and so many different needs, have hit rock bottom and they've had their children removed from them. And I just cannot, cannot know that a mama is without her baby and me not reach out to her and try and love her and comfort her and let her know that the stranger who has her kid is going to love her also. And I'm not going to try and take her kid, but I'm going to root you on and I'm going to fight alongside for, with, alongside you and advocate for you and cry with you and pray with you if you'll let me, you know. Um, and thankfully, of our three cases, two of those cases, we've been privileged enough to do that. One of them, um, we've not been able to. Um, and that's just that it's not always going to be beautiful. You know, we're going to sometimes we're going to be rejected and that's OK. Um, but we have to step in faith and try and reach the whole family, because if anyone in anything can mend that family, it is God. And we know that. And it's only God. God has to come in and intervene in mighty ways to mend that brokenness and give this family the strength to do what's right and to love their children and protect their children the way that they um, need to and to overcome whatever battles and needs the family had in the first place, you know, to, to lose their children. So we do everything we can to claw our ways into their lives and um, fight and pray with them. And we, um, we love, we just love, we try and love well. That's all. You know? It's hard. And you do. So I'm telling you people like she's, she's homeschooling her kids. She's got, uh, she's, She's tending to the needs, which there are a lot of special needs, um, mm -hmm. to some placements that have some extra needs, and some of them have been serious yeah. and very time-consuming needs. Um, then she's got, you know, they're reaching out to to reach out and spend time with the parents, and not only all that, but you've been driving downtown to be an advocate for foster children, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so, well, last um, legislative season, um, I tried to pass a bill for trauma training um, for foster parents. And the goal was to make it mandatory training for foster parents, because I believe that if par foster parents have a firm foundation of quality training on trauma, um, that it's going to help us parent better. I don't just want to be an okay foster parent. I want to be an amazing foster parent. And it's going to help us parent better, um, and, and which in turn is also going to give us the patience that we need um, to parent better and would avoid disruptions. Disruptions um, meaning a family says we cannot handle this behavior and so we have to move this child out of our home. Um, and that's one more level of trauma for these children every time they move it's traumatic and so my goal is to equip foster parents was to equip foster parents with the tools that they needed um to to be able to parent really well these kids from hard places and and keep them until they were going to their forever home um it is tragic for me to hear every time i hear that a kid has been disrupted it breaks my heart because i just think okay what could have this foster parent, foster family had in place to help empower them so that it didn't come to this situation. You know, um, disruptions are just very traumatic for the kids, and I, I hate any time I have to hear that that's happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now they've got this baby who. Complete going for the baby. So it froze. I don't know what you said. Okay. Okay. I was asking about now you've got this, this baby mm -hmm. that you've had since three days of age. I know he's not been the best sleeper. So you're now you're doing all this on big time sleep deprivation. Yes. Yeah. He's a little stinker. How's that going? Yeah. He's, he's a stinker, but he's awful cute. Praise the Lord. I think God makes him cute on purpose. You know. <laughs> Um, but he's two months old now. Yeah. He just turned two months old. Two months. Yep. 
Okay. Yep. And he is sleeping more. I think even more challenging than the sleeping was the fact that he screamed nonstop for the first month and a half of his life. And so on top of sleep deprivation, we had um, a, a screaming child. And then our other two placements who were also going through some pretty traumatic um, behavior at the time. So it was a bit overwhelming in our house, um, but the baby has really calmed down. We found like the magic recipe of formula and reflux medicine and he sleeps pretty well at night. So I feel like I'm operating at like half a tank of sleep, which is better than a quarter tank of sleep. So <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> right. Well, I am just so excited that I got to introduce everyone to you today, Stacey, and I will be getting this little um, plaque to you, and I'm hoping you are that so we cute. can this, like, every year from Coach Mom, pick a most inspiring mom, so you guys let me know um, about the inspiring moms that you know. Um, Stacey is so inspiring that she's the one that gave me the idea for this, so <laughs> I just... To death. That's so funny. And um, just such an inspiration, a great mom serving, serving hurting and broken children. And I know that you're impacting for the future in big time ways. So bless you, my friend. Oh, I love and you, friend. Thank, thank you. you this is so for... sweet. Okay. Well, you have a great day, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and you guys be blessed. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.